Hi there, this is Al24 News live from Algiers coming up next in our news program. Since the military takeover, more than 40 people have been killed in Sudanese protests by security forces who fired tear gas at tens of thousands of protesters in central Khartoum to oppose military rule following a coup last month plus. Three students were killed and eight people, including a teacher, were injured Tuesday night when a 15-year-old boy opened fire at a high school in rural Oxford, Michigan. And finally, NATO warned Russia that it would pay a heavy price if it invaded Ukraine. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ramtan Lamamra, took part in a two-day eighth ministerial session of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in the Senegalese, Senegalese capital, Dakar, at the invitation of his Chinese and Senegalese counterparts. The themes of the meeting was deepening the Sino-African partnership and promoting sustainable China-Africa development in the new era. On the sidelines of this ministerial meeting, the Algerian head of diplomacy was received received by Senegalese or Senegalese president Macky Sall to whom he conveyed fraternal greetings and the message of the president of the republic Abdel Majid Tabun on bi bilateral relations as well as developments on the african scene On the sidelines of this ministerial meeting, Ramtan Lamamra held a working session with his Chinese counterpart, who conveyed the greetings of the Chinese president to President Abdel Majid Tabun. Lamamra reaffirmed the importance that the head of state attaches to strengthening of the strategic partnership with China. Let's have a listen. We have discussed many strategic partnerships between Algeria and the People's Republic of China. We have many common matters and interests that we must strengthen, and also accelerate the pace of major structural projects completion, registered in the cooperation agenda between the two countries. We share many historical events, as Algeria was one of the countries that supported China in order to obtain a permanent seat in the Security Council. We hope very much to work with our Chinese partners, and we thank Senegal for this forum, which will contribute in strengthening relations between Africa and the People's Republic of China. Since the Sudanese military took over, more than 40 people have been killed in protests. On Tuesday, Sudanese security forces fired tear gas at tens of thousands of protesters in central Khartoum to oppose military rule following a coup last month. At least 40 people have been killed in protests in Khartoum since last month's military takeover. Sudanese security forces fired tear gas at protesters in central Khartoum on Tuesday. <laughs> The demonstration was the latest expression of resistance to military rule since last month's overthrow, which ended the collaboration between the civilians and military groups. However, following international denunciation in mass protests, Al Burhan reinstated Hamdok in a deal that was criticized by the country's pro-democracy movement, which was opposed to the military's involvement in politics. The Burhan Hamdok agreement, on the other hand, was encouraged by the United Nations, African Union, Western countries, along with Saudi Arabia and Egypt, which has close ties with Sudan's military. Hamdok asserted that he had partnered with the military to stop the fighting and not to waste the gains of the last two years. General Mohamed Hamdan de Gallo, the deputy head of Sudan's Governance of Sovereign Council, claimed that the deaths during protests are being investigated, blaming police and armed forces. Ugandan troops have traversed into the Democratic Republic of the Congo as part of a joint operation against the Allied Democratic Force, an armed group that both neighboring countries accuse of exterminating civilians. Zahra Farjani reports. Ugandan Democratic Republic of Congo carried out joint air and artillery strikes against the Allied Democratic Forces militia on Tuesday. Both countries promised to continue working together to secure the targeted area. The two countries said early Tuesday that the group, the deadliest of dozens of militias in the DRC's mineral-rich east, had been bombarded with artillery and airstrikes. Ugandan military spokesman Flavia Bekwaso said in a statement that the targets were hit with precision. 
Later, large number of Ugandan soldiers entered the DRC at the Nobili border post in North Kivu state. DRC Army spokesman Leon Richard Kasonga said in a statement, Uganda special units will carry out search and control operations to clear and secure ADF positions affected by this morning's strikes. Explosions and artillery fire have been reported in North Kivu's Watlinja district as well as Buga and Chabi districts, the ADF's known bases in neighboring Ituri province. The move is not universally supported in the DRC, where many critics recall Uganda and Rwanda's part in the decades-long instability in the country's east. And to talk more about this, I'm joined live by Skype by Omagor Joseph, journalist from Uganda. Well, first, Joseph, what happened exactly as following the joint air race launch yesterday on the ADF? Okay, first of all, I would like to say that I am uh, in northern Uganda, in uh, the city of Guru, which is about uh, 200 uh, kilometers away from uh, the DRC Uganda border. And uh, we've had um, a, a couple of issues happening in our country, uh, starting from the 27th of uh, August uh, 2021, when the former Deputy Inspector General of Police, Paul Lokech, uh, was laid to rest. Uh, during his burial, we got the information from uh, the security forces that there was attempted bomb attack uh, during the burial. Uh, then uh, subsequently, uh, a couple of people were arrested, and uh, personally, I was uh, I attended actually the barrio in Ipade district. Uh, then uh, we, we uh, a few weeks later, uh, that was uh, in um, the month of October uh, in Kampala, we got a bomb attack uh, that was at Komamboga, uh, where one person was killed on the 24th of October. Uh, that was 2021. So there have been some issues building up, and uh, all this while uh, the the blame was pointing at ADF rebels who are believed to be operating on the eastern side of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, the president, uh, His Excellency Yorick Autam Seven, came out to address the nation and said uh, that the nation would uh, fight back uh, all the terrorists who are trying to destabilize the country. But then uh, a few weeks later, we had twin bomb attacks that was in Kampala on the 16th of November, where about six people are believed to have died uh, from uh, injuries. And then also another 33 were critically admitted in various hospitals uh, in uh, the city center. What happened, uh, what, what we know is that these twin bomb attacks actually happened near the central police station, uh, that's in Kampala, in the capital city. And then also along the parliament avenue near the parliament of uganda so it's there's been a threat a security threat but we did not know that um uh, we would actually wake up this morning to find uh, the news that uh, the forces had actually uh, started the air strikes in the eastern part of the RRC. Well, Joseph, this actually leads us to our concluding question. And here, do you think that Uganda is able to approve the so-called ISIL from the country? Uh, Nadia, unfortunately, that question is uh, uh, is well above me. And uh, I believe that uh, our country is, uh, is a sovereign country that has a structure, security structures in place. and. Uh, the country has been stable for, for a while now, and uh, maybe the security can 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 maybe uh, take on that question. I can't really say much about that, but I believe that uh, you know there's a security threat, a threat uh, currently in the country, and uh, people are um, living in fear, especially where there are crowds and uh, in various city centers across the country. Thank you so much, journalist Omagar Joseph, you joined us live from Uganda via Skype. And to another story now, three students were killed and eight people, including a teacher, were injured Tuesday night when a 15-year-old boy opened fire at a high school in rural Oxford, Michigan. Oakland Police Chief Michael McCabe said the suspect was a student at the same high school in Michigan. However, the motive behind the crime was unknown. According to the district police, the injured people were transferred to the district hospital while their conditions are stable.
Reactions all over the world started to take place after the uproar caused by the new COVID-19 variant Omicron. Many international borders have been closed as the virus made its way to dozens of countries worldwide. Ayyadi Osama. Tracking the new COVID-19 variant has become compulsory, as this strain made its way through the world and many countries still consider it unknown. However, dozens of countries changed their sanitary policy in bid to face this variant. World Health Organization showed worry over the reaction of some countries towards the virus, explaining that closing borders or banning certain people from entering some countries is not the best response. In addition, the same organization urged people to avoid traveling in the current period, especially those who are over 60. The Saudi press agency announced detecting the first Omicron variant case, adding that the infected person has been isolated with all the ones who had a direct contact with him. The Saudi health ministry announced that the traveler came from a North African country. The Latin American country Brazil announced detecting the first two cases of the new variant. The cases involved two missionaries living in South Africa. According to Brazil's health service agency, the two people will be sent to confirmation laboratory for further analysis. As for the US, travelers are to face tougher restrictions in COVID testing, as well as tightening travel rules. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the USA, entering the country requires a negative COVID testing performed within one day of the departure. In Europe, Medicines Agency Executive Director Emmer Cook stated that laboratory analyses should indicate whether the blood of the vaccinated people has enough antibodies to neutralize the virus, while BioNTech CEO stated that a partnership of his company with Pfizer would provide a strong protection against Omicron. On the other hand, Japan began administering, administering COVID-19 booster shots to healthcare workers nationwide today, Wednesday, as the country braces for the potential impact of the Omicron variant, a concerning new strain of the coronavirus that scientists worldwide are scrambling to search. NATO warned Russia on Tuesday that it would pay a heavy price if it invaded Ukraine. Foreign ministers of NATO's members' countries met in Riga, the capital of Latvia, and discussed ways to deter any Russian invasion of Ukraine after Moscow mobilized tens of thousands of its soldiers and strengthened its military presence on the border between the two countries. Hussein U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned Tuesday in Riga during NATO member countries' foreign ministers' meeting that any new Russia aggression against Ukraine would call for dangerous response. Any escalatory actions by Russia would be of great concern to the United States as they would to Latvia, and any renewed aggression uh, would trigger serious consequences. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also announced that the Alliance forces were deployed for the first time to the eastern side of Europe due to Russian threats to Ukraine and added that NATO has to be prepared for the worst and that any future Russia aggression against Ukraine would come at a high price. There will be a high, a high price to pay for Russia uh, if they once again use force against the independent sovereign nation uh, Ukraine. Uh, we have demonstrated our ability to impose costs, economic, political actions, and also uh, uh, over the years also increased our uh, military presence in this region uh, just to make sure that all allies are totally uh, defended and protected against, against any Russian aggressive actions. For its part, Russian President Vladimir Putin in an investment forum has warned NATO that their deployment of weapons and troops to Ukraine represent a red line for Moscow and could trigger a strong response. If strike systems are deployed on Ukraine soil, the estimated flight time would be 7 to 10 minutes or even 5 minutes for hypersonic weapons. What are we supposed to do then? We will then be forced to do something similar to counter the threat. And we have the capabilities, even now. We have successfully tested a March 9 capable submarine launched hypersonic missile, and it will be in service starting early next year. And its flight time will also be five minutes. But what's the goal? What is it for? Creating these kinds of threats is what we see as red lines. 
Turkey, on the other hand, expressed the will to mediate between Russia and Ukraine, hoping that this region does not become a region dominated by war, but rather a region dominated by peace. This rise in tension comes after Ukraine's military intelligence reported that Russia had amassed tens of thousands of its troops around Ukraine's borders and was preparing for an attack by the end of January or the beginning of February. There were fears that Iran's new administration that was elected in June would end the first round of talks and claim that the only legitimate concern for discussion was the list of economic sanctions that the U.S. must lift. Iran agreed to discuss compliance steps with the agreement, which has made progress in the nuclear discussion. The World Health Organization celebrates the World AIDS Day on the 1st of December of each year, and in this year, 2021, the world celebrates during the coronavirus pandemic, which disrupted many other health services, including services for treating AIDS patients, and raises the organization's slogan this year, eliminating of inequalities. Equality is a means to eradicate AIDS. HIV remains a major public health issue affecting millions of people worldwide. And finally, on this occasion, Algerian Health Ministry has organized an open day regarding raising awareness of to prevent spread of AIDS under the slogan of End Inequalities and AIDS. And our journalist Islam Seed has attended the event and talked to United Nations Resident Coordinator to Algeria, Alejandro Alvarez, who had this to say. Today we are celebrating uh, the uh, International Day of uh, um, Fighting Against uh, AIDS. Um, an HIV and this is an important uh, day to on one side uh, celebrate the achievements of uh, national authorities, civil society organizations here in Algeria for uh, so much work that is being done. At the same time uh, we are looking at uh, what is still has to be done. Uh, there is a number of uh, issues uh, that you know need to be uh, improved but you know the achievements have been you know very important as well. And now, let's have a reminder of our main top stories. Since the military takeover, more than 40 people have been killed in Sudanese protests by security forces who fired tear gas at tens of thousands of protesters in central Khartoum to oppose military rule following a coup last month. Three students were killed and eight people, including a teacher, were injured Tuesday night when a 15-year-old boy opened fire at a high school in rural Oxford, Michigan. And NATO warned Russia it would pay a heavy price if it invaded Ukraine. That's all for me, Nadia Kasmi, and the rest of the team. The news continues on All24 News. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.